Hello and welcome to Photographic Connections, the podcast where we create connection to self, nature and others through the art of photography. My name is Kim Grant, the founder of Photographic Connections and your host for this podcast. And today I'm absolutely delighted to welcome Jessie Williamsey onto the podcast. Jessie is an artistic photographer based in Adelaide, Australia who creates beautiful artistic images using intentional camera movement. She finds creative photography very healing, offering her the chance to have some me time and develop a greater appreciation for the world that surrounds her. Intentional camera movement has offered her the freedom to express herself in a way that she'd never found with other creative hobbies or photographic styles. If you don't already do ICM, Jessie's infectious enthusiasm may just inspire you to give it a go. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Jessie Williamsey. Hi Jessie, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast this week. I'm really looking forward to speaking with you because I came across your beautiful imagery recently on an online platform called Impressionography, which is all about ICM and multiple exposure imagery. And I was absolutely blown away with your photographs and I thought it would be great to come have you on here this week to talk basically about your photography and your inspirations. So before we begin delving into your current photography work, I wondered if you could go way back to the beginning of your journey and share the story of what got you into photography in the first place. All right. Um, I think I began my photography journey uh, about 2005 and it started when uh, me and my family moved from the Netherlands, where I was living, uh, to Australia. And exploring the amazing, beautiful country here and the fantastic nature, nature and especially the colors, that gave me a kick to capture it. So I just wanted to, to, to have it. <laughs> Not only to see it at the moment, but also to have a photo of it. And, of course, I had these uh, point-and-shoot cameras, what we had those days. And the big change happened when we went to a trip to Uluru, if you know, the big rock in the middle of Australia. And that was absolutely mind-blowing. The colours, the sunset, the sunrises, it was just out of this world. So I was clicking and clicking and clicking. But when I came home, it, was, it wasn't really, I couldn't with this point and shoot camera capture, uh, capture the, the beauty of it. So I said, no, I need something more advanced. And then I bought my first uh, Nikon camera and I didn't know anything about photography. I'm very self-taught. So I didn't know anything about shutter speed or aperture and <laughs> what I was doing. Started, uh, I started to watch to tutorials, hundreds of them online to, to teach myself, well, what do I do actually with this camera and the settings and never heard of Photoshop or Lightroom, of course. So slowly that came into the picture and I, I was completely hooked and that was 2005. And from that moment I just couldn't uh, put my camera down anymore and it was, yeah, it, it still it is a hobby, uh, a passion, just in a way, way of life. Yeah, that's fantastic and, and so beautiful. It's like the move from you from the Netherlands to Australia was clearly a very amazing catalyst for you to pick up a camera and begin to connect. And I've had a couple of people on the podcast in the past who have are based in the Netherlands and they tend to do either ICM work or multiple or, or um yeah ICM and multiple exposures or macro photography because the landscape there of course is very flat. Whereas for you moving to Australia, I mean that must have just been such an incredible experience. Oh it was it was ab absolutely mind blowing that uh, well the nature is just uh, so beautiful, so intense. The colors are intense. Everything is uh, different, very, very different than what I was used to. And yeah, that actually 
made me go into the photography. And uh, in the beginning, I was doing just, you know, landscapes about uh, macro lens and long lens and everything what was uh, possible uh, to upgrade and to, to do more with it. Uh, and about five years ago, I think, yeah, I came by accident article something about uh, ICM. And I was very, very interested at a certain moment to try it myself because before I was uh, doing the photography, I was painting. I just wanted to express myself and I had the urge to be creative about paint and a canvas and whatever, not knowing again what I was doing, but I loved it and wanted, you know, a bit of abstract and playing with colors and stuff. But when I saw the first ICM images that came by accident somewhere on a computer, I can't remember, I said, oh my God, but that's how I wanted to paint. That's exactly how I wanted to paint, but of course I wasn't good in that, <laughs> didn't manage quite. And I said, I'm going to do it with my camera. What I wanted to do those days with a paint and a canvas, I'm going to try to do that with my camera. And my first day that I really went out and with the intention to move and do something what I already little knew a little bit about, I came home and was absolutely blown away. It was here in, a, in a autumn time, so the colors were amazing. I, co I came home and looked at it and I said, well, that's it. That's it. And from that moment, maybe 90% of the time I do a ICM. I can't take normal pictures anymore. I'm just so hooked into it. Of the creativity of it, the uh, yeah, I, I just can't explain it all of it, and that's what I'm doing now. How beautiful! You can just hear the excitement and the passion in your voice there as you're talking about you doing your ICM, and I love that you had this interest in painting, and it was something that you you maybe struggled a little bit with, and suddenly you were like, "Oh my gosh, I can do something similar with my camera," and it's just opened up a whole new world for you. And I did see on Instagram you've got a landscape page, but you also have your ICM and multiple exposure page, and of course it was the creative images that first drew me to you, but you can see I think in your creative images the passion the excitement the awe the wonder that that comes through in your work with how you're connecting with the world around you and you've done the um, ICM and multiple exposures with a number of different subjects in nature as well haven't you yes well no normally I go out in nature we have here beautiful beaches and uh, the outbreak is uh, also with the colors in it. Uh, we have the Murray River here, the Riverland, which is one of, one of my favorites, especially in the morning when there is a mist hanging on the river and the sunrise. It's, uh, yeah, it's just amazing. And birds, bird photography I do as well with ICM, which is very difficult, by the way. It's very, very challenging, <laughs> very difficult. But um, it's intensive, intensive work, because when I go out to shoot for, uh, let's say, a couple of hours, I come home with seven, 800 images, which is a lot <laughs> to go through. And, of course, you have a lot of uh, try and error. It's uh, to, to, to come home with something that I say, wow, wow, that's really good. I need hundreds and hundreds of shootings and tryings and this movement or that movement and it's every time different you never know it's always a surprise and that's that's why I love it it's unpredictable and but when it happens it's wow factor and I, I can't repeat it myself it's unique each each image is unique by itself because no one else can do it and even I can't repeat it so that's exciting, yeah, that's exciting, very exciting. And also I don't have to go anymore on a, 
interesting awesome locations or wait for sunset or sunrise even here in a backyard I, I can do such a beautiful ICMs with little things little flowers arrangement or something and it looks like completely different line, landscape that you wouldn't know where it is so it's just a magic world <laughs> that you create yourself Yes. And I think if you're a particularly imaginative person as well, in some ways, it's just, it's amazing what you can do with ICM. You know, it's something that I've dabbled in quite a bit, but I've, I need to do more of it because I love the, the spontaneity of it, but also the uncertainty of it. And as you say, when you do create an image that really speaks to you, it's it's so exciting. And that idea that it can't be replicated, you know, you can't replicate it, nobody else can replicate it. It's so unique and unusual. And I think one of the things I love as well is that every ICM image, depending on the light and the color and the the, the technique you can or the movement you use and the subject, it can resemble different types of painting sometimes. Sometimes some images could look very dark and dense and almost like waxy and um, you know, acrylic maybe style stuff. And the next time you can do something that looks like a watercolor and yeah, it, watercolor, it's so beautiful. Yeah. 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 Th th these are the ones that I, I like the best when they look a bit like watercolor painting. Yeah. But how do you do that? I, I still don't know. <laughs> I still don't know. It just comes <laughs> out like that. <laughs> well, of course, you do. You try different shutter speed and uh, one, uh, one second or two seconds exposure or uh, a bit quicker. It, uh, yeah. It varies. Every time is different. Every time is different. Mm. So before you moved to Australia, did you have a connection with nature before that? Yes, yeah. I always loved to be outside, uh, to go on a walks and uh, be, be in a forest or uh, love the mountains, which in the Netherlands we don't have, of course. But uh, originally I'm born in Bulgaria. That's my background and that's uh, a country a Balkan country with beautiful mountains and that from little one when with my parents we went on uh, uh, camping trips and uh, yeah in the mountains and that was always my yeah passion to be outside in nature and and it it's really well it's in me and here in Australia it's like I, I felt like I'm coming home because of the, the nature and the colors, it just speaks so much to me. It's like, yeah, here I belong. This is this is what really makes me happy to be here around and, uh, and to have this space around. We are very, very blessed here with a lot of space and walk somewhere only 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes drive from CBD in Adelaide where I live. You, you come in a beautiful nature place, places, then you can walk without seeing one person. And the whole nature and the surroundings you have all for yourself and just, to, yeah, look at it and enjoy it and, and makes me really happy. What, uh, something maybe I can tell you a bit, an, another story about, uh, just have a sip of water. Uh, what photography uh, is, uh, did uh, and actually saved a bit of a very difficult period when I was uh, 10 years ago, we immigrated here with my husband and my two, my two daughters and started on our own business here and so on. But um, about 10 years ago, my husband uh, became very sick. He had massive heart attack that actually he was not supposed to survive, but miracle he did, but his health was very deteriorating and very bad. So that was a very hard and difficult time for uh, the whole family. And what really saved me not to go insane and to, to handle this difficult period in my life was the camera. I had... Every day I went for one or two hours, not too long because I had to take care of him as well. I went out and in these one or two hours with my camera being in nature, 
we were living in the Adelaide, Adelaide Hills with a beautiful surrounding, beautiful nature around. I could completely lose myself, no thoughts, nothing, just being in a moment, taking picture of that tree or that flower or the bird or whatever it was there and not having any thoughts in my head, actually being in the moment. Later on, I realized that's mindfulness, what I was doing, not knowing exactly <laughs> that exactly what it was. But later on, I heard about my mindfulness and I said, well, that's what exactly I'm doing with my camera. Every thought, everything about uh, your problems, your worries, whatever it is, that's gone. You're just focusing on what's in front of you, the beauty of something, the colors, the light, or whatever it is. And that, that uh, yeah, photography then really saved me to, to keep going and to handle the situation, the difficult situation I was in. Thank you for sharing that, Jesse. I, I really appreciate it. And it, I'm sure many of the listeners will be able to, to gain some, some peace from what you've just shared. And it really shows the healing power, I think, of photography when we're going through a really difficult time, whatever it may be. You know, it, it's incredible. And, and I spoke to a, an author, actually, who's also a photographer based in Australia recently called Emma Gray for the, the podcast. And she, her husband, too, had a heart attack. He unfortunately didn't survive. Sorry, he, yeah, he unfortunately didn't survive. Um, and the only way she could get through the grief bringing up her young children was to get out every day for a walk and go out with her camera. And, um, you know, without that, she just couldn't have coped. And there's definitely a, a tie in there with what, what you've just shared is, you know, when we are going through really difficult times like that, photography can can be almost like the, the thing that keeps us going and, and tying that in with nature as well. Yeah, because we are, we we go out, we go outside, we are in nature, and we connect with it, and through the through the lens, through through the camera, we connect with the nature, with everything what surrounds us, and it was really very very healing, very healing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's so powerful. I just I find nature. We can't really explain it, but of course. It's like we are part of nature, aren't we, in many respects? And I think in the modern day world, many people have forgotten about that, unfortunately, just because of the way, you know, we live in modern times. There's no, there's no judgment to that. But there is something beautiful that I keep hearing from people who have this connection to nature and also a creative outlet such as photography how important it is at helping them through those hard times. And I think it must be quite difficult for people who don't have that access to nature or who don't have that creative outlet. Um, you know, you've just once again shown the importance of that. Yes. And what I also discovered is uh, since I started to walk with my camera, I opened my eyes to see many people just walk they watch, but they don't see. And little things like a pattern in a gum tree or a pattern in some rock or just very little things or the light that is just coming, that exactly on the top of the tree. People just walk and walk for, oh, yeah, and don't don't look around. They don't see it in a way, the, the little beauty, the, the beauty that is surrounding us. And with a camera, you start to look and really see. And that's what uh, I discovered that I'm doing it so much more now than I used to do before. I always used to, to enjoy and to, to see the beauty in nature. But since I had my, since the camera in my hands, <laughs> walking with the camera, I really learned to, to look. How beautiful. It's so true, isn't it? I mean, the vast majority of people, they might go out for a walk, but they're either in their own world or they're on their phone more often than not nowadays. And it's, there is, there's something so beautiful about being able to see because we realise how much beauty is around us. The tiniest things start speaking to us and the smallest things start giving us joy. And until we, we slow down and, and, and begin to see those things, you know, every day we're passing so much beauty and often we we don't realize yes that, that, that is very very true i start to join here um, uh, photography meetup groups and uh, so to meet to meet uh, yes i might need people 
uh, go on a little trips here and there. And it's, uh, it's the funny part is when I go somewhere on a trip with friends who are not into photography, they, they just walk by. They just <laughs> keep walking or keep driving. And I said, please stop, stop, stop. Well, look at the light there. I, I have to take picture of it. And, uh, <laughs> It's very annoying for them, of course. <laughs> yeah. Of course, we have to laugh. Oh, it's so difficult to go on a trip or on a holiday with people who are not into photography. Because, yeah, I drive them crazy sometimes because I have to stop so often to take pictures from here and there and the light here and the, the color there. And <laughs> it's really funny. It's really funny. Yes. I've heard so many people saying that and I've experienced that myself you know when you when you're not with other photographers and even sometimes when you are if you're not interested in the same things or you don't take that space to to photograph what interests you it is the other person is always like oh my gosh she's stopping again what's she stopping again for come on we're out for a walk it's quite important I think often to go out on our own or with with like-minded people do, do you go out mostly on your own then? Yes, I I prefer to be on my own, to do everything in my own tempo and, uh, well, not, not, not to worry to annoy others <laughs> because I stop so often or doing things that they maybe don't, not interested to see it or uh, to wait for me. Or I prefer to, to go on my own, uh, to have, uh, yeah, my own time, not to hurry and free to do whatever I want to do. That's uh, something, yeah, that's my time. That's very special, my time that I uh, have it only for myself, my connection with with nature and everything that's out there, it's for me. And, yeah, I like to share it with other people if they're interested to do, but I prefer uh, to go on my own. It, it's, um, yes. I'll, I don't like to talk to when I'm doing this. I prefer to just to sit and absorb everything. And yeah, it's kind of meditation. Beautiful. I think it's so important there to to mention, you know, what you've just said there about having you time, you know, having me time. Photography gives you that me time. And I think it, it's so important in life, you know, no matter how busy time gets with work and family and everything else, all our other commitments, I think we all need some me time. And um, being able to find a hobby such as photography, which, which it is for you to give you that me time, it's yeah, it's really needed, I think, and, and more and more so in the modern world with so much stimulation. We just need that time to ourselves to to create, to rest, to to be lost in our in our thoughts and our feelings and just yeah, be able to just yeah, step back from life a bit and have that, that rest time. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And of course, being in nature that that's so healing, that's recharging, that's everything. Yeah. Yeah. I think what I love is the fact that, you know, photography is, is a hobby for you. And that's something I'm I'm trying to do with this podcast is get a good mix of maybe more well-known professional photographers, but also people who simply use photography as a hobby because it's so relatable to so many people. And it, every single person in the world has a beautiful story. And I love that for you, even though your images are so incredibly beautiful and I would just love them to be shared all over the place because they're just, I think they're so emotive and and just lovely. And um, yeah, I was just so overjoyed when I found you um, on that online gallery group because I just thought, wow, they, these are, they just spoke to me so deeply. So yeah, I wondered if, I know you've kind of covered this, but I'm just thinking for those out there who are listening, who are hobby photographers, which is most people, you know, what does photography, you know, and having a hobby of photography, what do you think is the you know, the importance of it. Um, Alexi, I know you've already kind of covered this, but I wondered if we could delve a little bit deeper into this, having a hobby in something like photography. Well, in the first place, it's a very healthy hobby because we are always outside in nature, in the fresh air, uh, doing a lot of walking and hiking. I mean, at least that's what I do. To, to go to places and go in the woods or uh, walk on the beach. It's, it's a very healthy hobby. You do a lot of exercise with it to start with. <laughs> but for the rest, it's um, creative. 
it's so creative and it's uh, well for me it gives me so much joy joy and happiness and also uh, after I come home with uh, my, my SD card full with images the post processing it's another pleasure because outside is half of the work and inside in front of the computer and doing things with Lightroom or Photoshop. I don't mean me to manipulate much, but I like to play with the color, with the saturation or uh, change the white balance sometimes or just being creative because I like I do I do what I like to see. I don't care if it's uh, real or not real. It's just this, um, yeah, my artwork, I call it, um, I play with it, and that's also, yeah, part of uh, part of the fun. The post processing I really like to do, and I, I enjoy it as well. I, I say it always that uh, coming home with a raw file for me is like a, a bit of blank canvas, and then the painting starts. Mm, wow, I love that. I love that. You come home with this blank canvas and that's when the painting starts. I love that. And I also love that you mentioned at the beginning there about the kind of physical well-being elements of photography as well. You know, my background, when I first left school, I trained to be a nurse and I worked as a nurse for three years after I qualified. And for me, the well-being benefits of hobbies are of real interest. And I think, you know, every single hobby has a uh, a positive benefit to it. You know, finding a hobby that really works for you is so important. And of course, not everybody is going to resonate with photography. But I think especially nature, landscape photography, anything photographing outdoors, you know, it brings so much well-being together. You've got the physical element of walking around, the element of getting out into nature and experiencing all of that. You've got the creative rest element, the self-expression element. You've got the technical um, physical elements of physically holding something and doing something with your hands and then it's of course that package. then leads it's a into full yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> it does and then all the mind you know you've already <laughs> mentioned the mindfulness element and the meditation element you know like yeah I don't know any other I mean I'm sure there is but I can't really think of any other outlet that offers so much as photography does well the, I, I can't either it just well, for me, it gives uh, everything that I need, and everything that I like to do, a combination of uh, to be a nature lover, to be outside, to do my walks, my hikes, and in the meantime, doing something creative, and then coming home and continuing with the creativity, it's, well, it's a perfect combination, really. I'm very blessed to, <laughs> to be able to do this. <laughs> Very, very blessed that I discovered uh, <laughs> this hobby. Mm, I've just gone really tingly. It's like I think I've just realised. I mean, I've always known, but I think just what we're speaking about, it's photography is so powerful from a healing perspective and from so many perspectives. But I've just I've just got all tingly, which I think is, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, that that's really nice. That um, well, yeah, especially with uh, when I um, discovered uh, the possibility uh, with uh, ICM and the creativity of it, and it's actually kind of fusion between painting and photography, and that yeah, that that creativity that comes out of it and experimenting. It's a lot of experimenting because. Uh, you can do so much with different shutter speeds, different movements, uh, many, many, many different uh, uh, things you can do with it and experiment. And every time I'm surprised, oh, something new. I didn't know that can happen that way. So it, it never ends. It never ends. Yes, yes. I think what's really coming through to me about you is the 
the authenticity in what you're creating. You know, I think a lot of photographers go through this process of feeling a bit restricted or learning the technicalities of photography, but then maybe there's a barrier in the way that stops them fully expressing themselves in the way they want to. But I think it's very clear with you that you you go out there and just photograph whatever's speaking to you in whatever way you want to, and then go home and edit it, edit it in whatever way you want to as well. Have you ever felt any creative resistance or have you always just felt this outflow of this is what I like, this is what I enjoy, I'm just going to create for myself? Yeah, yeah, I, I just do what uh, what uh, I enjoy, I like to do. And uh, the ACM gave me a lot of freedom. I, I dicked all my uh, tripod. I don't have to carry that anymore with me. I don't have to think really much about uh, technical technicalities when you do normal landscape that everything should look, look technically perfect or so, that's gone. <laughs> that's really liberating <laughs> for me. And that's why I love it as well. And the freedom that you have from just create something, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. Some people will like it, others will say, well, wow, what's that? But I don't care. It's it's my my art. I know I call it art. And my way of, yeah, be artistic and be creative. And I do it pure for myself. And of course, I do like to share it and like on Instagram or uh, other websites. But the pleasure I have with it, it's um, my pleasure. And if people like to see it and give me a nice feedback and a compliment, of course, it's great to hear. But I do it because I love it and I like it. Wow. I love that, Jesse. I just love the freedom, the liberation that all of this has given you. And yeah. oh, just every, everything you've said throughout this discussion has just been incredible. <laughs> I just feel so um, passionate and excited now to get out and, and do some ICM and free myself. <laughs> yeah, well, I've tried it. It's really, really liberating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it, Do you it's, ever take? Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, well, it's no, also, no. On you go. On you go. Uh, also, you ki- you can create your own uh, scenery. You create your own fantasy landscape. If if you have a little um, like the beach with some waves or something, the way you can move with your camera, you can create a mountain. From, from the from the ocean or from the wave, it can look like a mountain or hills or uh, you know, it just you you create the imaginary world that's not there but that that's so so great to see that's a really such a fun to do that you can create your own landscapes. <laughs> Yes. And I've seen people who can't get out the house for whatever reason or can't, you know, maybe get to nature, creating nature in their ICM images from things in their home or their garden. And it can, it can really make you connect with things that may not be readily available to you. Because of course, not everybody is fortunate enough to live in beautiful areas with a lot of nature surrounding them but almost like ICM photography can allow you to as you say there see mountains in the sea if you can't get near the mountains or create grass and I don't know some house plants in your house or or anything you know you can create whatever you don't have in your reality that you want you can create in an ICM image yeah you can you can create your own reality I have one of my favorite uh, uh, images that I have, I just did here in a neighborhood, only five minutes walk from my home. We have a little uh, reserve and a creek and just sitting there and focusing how the light plays in the creek with the water, it, it, it creates something unique and a, a beautiful world by itself and it's just here. Uh, insignificant if you see it uh, how normally it looks and that's so beautiful of the ICM to to be able to create something like a beautiful landscape from actually nothing (laughs) yes Yes, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It's really, really beautiful. And I guess, do you not really do much traditional landscape photography anymore now that you found this this amazing creative no, outlet not, in ICM? Not, not, not anymore, really. Well, a little bit. 
yeah, still a little bit, but uh, maybe 90% of the time I do ICM. And, you know, because also I, I like the, to be a bit different than, than others. So if I go to some scenery here, like uh, the beach with a jetty or whatever, there are so many other people taking pictures and doing really very, very beautiful landscape photography. But it's that jetty on that beach. You can see it. It's, uh, you can recognize it. But when I do it, you don't see it, that it's the same place or the same jetty, I create something completely different out of it. And that's, yeah, that's what I like to be a bit yeah. unique. Yeah. I think what I love as well is I like to contemplate sort of philosophical thoughts and things like that. And I think when you're trying to maybe make different concepts out of your photography or different thoughts and feelings, I think abstract photography such as intentional camera movement can raise so much more questions in the viewer, which can help reflect a lot back to them as well as anything else you're trying to pose. So that's one thing I'm contemplating just now is doing more intentional camera movement so that I can create almost, as we've mentioned, almost fantasy worlds, but that can then bring up different ideas and concepts for people because everyone sees something different in an ICM image, you know, depending on what the subject is which is also another exciting experience for the the viewer of your images as well as of course you as the creator yeah and they are uh, i joined uh, a few icm uh, network group uh, they have um, a site and um, also a membership uh, if you want to to learn more so with uh, different topics and uh, yeah, different teams every month. And the people who are running it are fantastic as ICM artists. And I learned a lot, a lot from them. So you can yeah grow in it and uh, explore it and uh, really yeah learn more. And it's art kind of, yeah, art what you're creating. And it's very interesting and satisfying. Yes, yes. I have to say, I'm just, I'm just feeling so inspired and excited now to, to get out there and explore this after speaking to you, Jesse. You've got a real, a real ability to instill passion and excitement in people. Just speaking to you today has been so infectious, and I'm sure the listeners have also gained a lot from listening to to your story. So, for those who have listened and really resonate. <laughs> Those who, who have listened and really Thank resonate you so with what you're saying. Right. Where can people go if they'd like to, to look at your imagery? Yeah, well, the, the ICM um, ph photography, yeah, that's in Instagram only. Yes, brilliant. Fantastic. I will link to your Instagram page in, in the, the show notes below so people can go and, and check out your work. And I'm sure they'll be absolutely mesmerized with what you've created, Jesse, because your imagery is, is so, so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you so much for your time today. It's been an absolute pleasure connecting with you. Thank you. Pleasure was mine. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this week's podcast. It really does mean the world to me. If you'd like to get further involved with Photographic Connections, including joining our online community, you can find all the details at photographicconnections.com. And now that this podcast has come to an end, there's only one thing left for you to do. It's time to pick up your camera and head outdoors. There's so many incredible photographic opportunities just waiting for you to discover.